Oh boy, we got our KFC plate. We got a plate fit for the KFC gods. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Osaka here in Japan. We are in the Osaka prefecture and we're bringing you guys an awesome video today. Today we're gonna to be trying, yes, KFC in Japan. This is super exciting. It's something that I've wanted to do since we arrived in Japan. And little did you know, Osaka was actually the birthplace of KFC in Japan. We'll actually be giving you all the history as well of KFC in this country because it's a huge deal here. So let's hop into KFC, order some food off the menu, talk about it, eat it, enjoy it, see what it's like. Let's go. <laughs> Oh boy, I just went to town on this thing. We got a plate fit for the KFC gods, essentially. I bought $17 worth of KFC, 1,710 yen. So I'm not playing around here. I wanted to give this a proper try because I heard KFC in Japan's on another level. I am sad when I was looking on the menu, I couldn't see anything that was like anything uniquely Japanese-y on KFC's menu, but we got a bunch of things here. I don't know once again what any of it is because I couldn't read the order, but I think this is like a seasoned chicken breast. We got some like deep cut potato fries. Another kind of like seasoned chicken breast. I think this is like crispy chicken. A drumstick that's kind of falling apart. So it's like a zombie drumstick. And then we got a classic chicken burger. We're gonna dive into the chicken burger first. It, uh, it might get soggy. So we'll, we'll give it a taste. We'll see what it's like. Mmm, that's very good. So for you guys who are, might be new to my channel, you'll know that I have on this round the world trip developed kind of a love for fried chicken. And I've rediscovered KFC because I haven't really eaten it much growing up. And going from country to country and having it everywhere, it's really good. Let's jump into this crispy chicken. And while I'm eating, I'm going to be giving you guys kind of the history of KFC in Japan because it's pretty interesting. Mmm. Check that out. Mmm. This one's seasoned so well. So one thing that I've learned about KFC in Japan is actually they tested KFC first in Osaka in Japan. They made these kind of like little test locations for people to try them and when they saw some success with them they opened the first official branches in the city of Nagoya which we've already visited. And another interesting fact for you that you might not know, the US company that owns KFC, I believe is a KFC corporation, actually brokered a deal with the company Mitsubishi, yes the car manufacturer, to actually buy the rights to KFC in Japan. So the people who own KFC Japan are Mitsubishi and they're on the stock exchange in Japan. And they're actually a pretty big stock. They are KFC's third largest market in the world after China and the US. So USA, China, and then Japan. And I can tell why, it's delicious. I have a lot of mayo in my mouth, right? Next thing we're gonna jump into is kind of like this crispy chicken breast grilled thing. Ready? Here we go. Mmm. The chicken on this one's a little more stiff, but definitely this one's more reminiscent of KFCs I've had in other countries. I think this one's probably seasoned with the 11 herbs and spices that KFC is famous for. Or is it 12? Or is it 7? Or is it 10? I think I just messed up KFC's tagline. Still very good. This one's a little drier though. So, 
How did KFC come become so popular in Japan? As you know, Japan is an inherently Buddhist and Shinto country. That's a religion that they practice, the two most populous religions in the country. KFC Japan actually implemented this thing. It was an advertising marketing campaign called Kentucky for Christmas in Japan. I think it started over a few decades. I think it started over a few decades ago, and it was so successful that it integrated within Japanese society to eat KFC during Christmas. Mm. I'm just trying these kind of fries, potato wedges. These are so good. So it became so successful that Japanese people just started eating KFC during Christmas season, which is a holiday most of them don't even celebrate, at least not religiously. And so that's how this became so integrated in society here. They have over a thousand six hundred stores, I believe, in Japan, which is a nuts. It's bananas. They have a few in every big city and they have them widespread all over the country. All right, we're going to try the chicken drumstick now. I'm just going to jump in. It looks super oily, super flaky. Here we go. All of that just ripped off in one bite. So as for the seasoning on the outside, I'm not wowed, but the chicken flavor itself, I think that more has to do with Japan itself, just being able to produce better chicken. But the chicken is, wow, fantastic. That's really good. We got another piece of crispy chicken meat. I think this one might be a little different than the one I had earlier. We'll give it a shot. This one looks super, super crispy. This one's actually a little more oily and a little wetter. The meat's a little less dry than let's say this one. Seasoning isn't as strong, and it's kind of like a flaky, almost tempura-like texture. Okay. I got this just massive KFC going on in my plate right now. We're gonna give this, this is the final thing we haven't tried yet. This looks like super seasoned chicken breast. Let's try it out. Oh my gosh, that is so good. You can really taste like all the herbs. I think there's a lot of like oregano and cilantro on this one and a lot of black pepper and you can really taste that. KFC Japan has got it going on, ladies and gentlemen. This is this is pretty delicious. I'll put it like this. The the kind of like batter that it's fried in on the actual fried chicken doesn't taste overwhelmingly oily here. Especially not what I remember it was in the US when I had it. When it comes to health wise, fried chicken's never healthy, but maybe your health points are a little better in Japan. But it really doesn't taste overwhelmingly oily by any means. I mean, you have some pieces like this that are a little less seasoned, some pieces that are a little more seasoned. So I think the seasoning across the board needs to be worked on just a tad. So I think, ladies and gentlemen, it'll be a smart idea. Kind of crown a winner of this box. I think it'll have to be a close tie between the potato wedges and the chicken burger, but I think the chicken burger is the winner in this situation. I think the fact that there's a little bit of mayonnaise on it helps. There's lettuce. It's seasoned really well, and the buns are delicious. All right, guys, I think I got to tap out. That's all for me. It's a little too much fried chicken for one boy to handle. That was KFC Japan though. That was absolutely delicious. I'm really impressed. <laughs> Boom. KFC done. Moshe, how did, how did it taste? I think it was great. I had so much of the chicken. I was so yummy. Mm. <laughs> Moshe's feeling kind of sick, so he sat out on this meal. But, uh... Damn, guys, that was insanely delicious. So we're here in Osaka for about six more days uh, before we leave Japan. This is kind of the end of our Japan trip. We move on to our next location, and we're staying at a very, very cool hostel. So we're gonna bounce over there right now. I'm not sure if I'm gonna give you guys a tour in this video or in the next one, but when we get there, I'll decide how I'm feeling, and then uh, we'll see what happens. All right, guys, this is the area of Osaka that our hostel is in. It's called the Air Osaka Hostel. Very chill place, very new place. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be giving you guys a tour tonight. I'm pretty exhausted. We've had a full day in Osaka, even though we didn't vlog it. We've essentially been planning out the vlog schedule for this week, because we got a lot of content to cover and not so much time to cover it all. Huh. Me and Moshe are very excited for it. We're gonna hit you guys with your Japanese word of the day today, which is gonna be chicken meat, which is toriniku. And yeah, toriniku, means chicken. That's your word of the day. See you guys in the next one. Make sure you check out the travelingclad.com if you want to buy some merch and support this channel. You can buy one of these shirts. Don't forget to check out the Air Osaka Hostel because they're hosting us up here in uh, in Osaka while we're here. Make sure to send them some love. Stay with them if you're here in Osaka. We'll see you in the next one. Love you a long time. Goodbye, class.